what we see is that when people regularly visualize doing an exercise like lifting um, a heavy table, for example, so people might do that every day for a month, just visualizing it, not actually going to the gym. Um, Now, that's not going to actually build the muscle fibers themselves. But what it does do is change the way the brain plans and executes its movements when it's lifting heavy weights. So it's kind of encouraging it maybe to recruit more muscle fibers and to make those movements more efficient, to give you the confidence, to give the prediction machine the confidence that it can lift heavier weights than you have been doing previously. And that's exactly then what happened at the end when these participants were tested after having done this visualization exercise every day for a month. At the end of that, they were able to lift about 10% heavier weights than they had done previously um, before they'd done the visualization um, exercise. So it's very a very marked effect. Um, now I'd say the best thing, obviously, is to do both, to kind of go to the gym and combine that with visualization. It's also really useful if you're injured. Um, so there have been studies looking at people who've got their arms in plaster casts, and they get them to do this visualization exercise. And what that helps is to maintain the strength in those muscles, even when they're not being used, because it helps the brain to kind of recognize that there's still strength in those limbs and that you can still, once the cast is off, you can still get back to your regular routine um, without having lost all of the progress you've made previously. Now, is there a specific type of visualization that is the most impactful? Yeah, so... um, you could do it in a kind of first person or third person perspective. And what I mean by that is you could kind of really immerse yourself in this visualization as if you are actually doing the exercise right now in your body. Or you could look at it from the outside as if you were like an observer watching you do that. Um, that's not very useful at all. There's no statistically significant benefit to doing that third person fly on the wall visualization. For building strength at least. Um, But there, you know, is really that immersed first person visualization that's the most effective. That's interesting that you should mention that because any time that I've ever visualized myself uh, going through any behaviors or or emotions, I've never thought about it in viewing it in third person. It was always in first person, but I, I guess if you told somebody to visualize it, they, they could very well do it in third person and not reap any benefits. Exactly. I mean, there, so actually, weirdly, there are some other benefits to visualizing stuff in the third person, but just not the strength. Not but say, one. if you are getting super stressed about an event and you keep on thinking about it, so say you are thinking about this talk that's really stressing you out, trying to imagine yourself from the third person in that situation leaves you feeling more detached and can actually reduce the stress response. So there's benefits to both. But I think when you're building strength, you really want the brain to be planning those movements very accurately. And that's best if you're immersed in what you're visualizing. The level of detail that you utilize in the visualization helps tremendously as well. So it's not just, okay, I'm going to think about it for 30 seconds, but it's every syllable of the talk with you on stage. It's you walking in the room for the interview, answering the questions, then exiting the room. And the more that you can harness your ability to visualize as fully as possible that experience, the more benefit you're giving your brain for that future experience and its predictive modeling. Yeah, exactly. You're kind of giving yourself the possibility, I guess, to try out all the different alternative scenarios you might face. And then, you know, it's like, it is like a form of rehearsal, I guess. It's just you're doing it in your mind if you can't actually get to the venue to do it in front of an audience um, before the talk itself. So yeah, as much detail as you can in that circumstance, I think is incredibly helpful. 